In today's video, Noah Xavier and I modernize Minecraft with marvelous machinery. From mechanical saws chopping down trees, to factories producing anything you want whenever you want, this mod pack does it all. Watch as we craft contraptions that boggle the mind. Join us as we spend 100 days industrializing Minecraft in the mod pack, Create Above and Beyond. If we were gonna go from caveman to capitalist, we needed supplies. Noah feared the consequences of our industrial ambitions, but I was able to change his mind. After that, we got some wood, made some tools, got some stone, and while our tasks seem simple now, little did we know that things were about to get very complicated. There were quests, there were professions, there was even a marketplace where we could take some of our items and sell them for coins. But we didn't want to get ahead of ourselves. The sun had set, we had no food, so we had to sustain ourselves off of a diet of kelp. And while things seemed grim, we spotted some birds, and we took that as a sign that we would soon be soaring to success. So we thanked the birds for their inspiration by keeping them warm in our mouth. After that, we found the site of what would soon be our home. Now this next house, it wasn't going to be fancy like the last one. To be honest, this site was going to be more of a factory than a home. All we really needed was a roof over our head, and seeing how it was already day two, I felt that we were already falling behind. Once the house was finally complete, it was time to get to work. And that meant sleepless nights. Our first real task was to make algal blends, a combination of kelp and clay. This was the base for another material known as andesite alloy. These alloys were going to be crucial if you wanted to make any of the machines. And there are a lot of machines to make. For the first time ever, I actually found myself mining andesite. And with it, I crafted our first machine. We also needed to dip our toes in Tinker's construct. I made a little smell tree, and then I went down into the cave to mine some ores. After a day's worth of mining, we finally had all the supplies and all the tools we needed to make our first machine. We have technology. We made a mechanical press, a machine that flattens ingots into sheet metal. All that innovating worked up an appetite, and with no food, we needed to start a farm. After that, it was crucial that we made the other machines and then upgraded them, with one of the first upgrades being the addition of a conveyor belt. We were one step closer to automation because now we could have the items move from point A to point B all by themselves. Little by little, piece by piece, we added more machines to our factory, including this mechanical saw. Gone are the days of primitive axes. After that, we decided to take a little stroll through the woods. And that's when we came across a suspicious sight. Now at this point, our main problem was getting ingots. You see, every time we put ore in a furnace, we wouldn't get ingots, we got nuggets. And it takes nine nuggets to make an ingot. So we needed to find a way to get the most out of our ore, which brings us to the millstone. It's a grinder that turns your ore into powder. We then took the powder and washed it with water using our mechanical fan. We got more nuggets than we would have if we just put it in a furnace. But we needed to take it a step further. If we combined the millstone with the mechanical fan, we could have our ores grinded and washed and then put in a chest, all without having us interfere. While I was working on that, Noah was deep underground, working on a project of his own. Remember, we needed andesite, and a lot of it. So what better way to get that than by making an andesite generator? Blocks come out, they get broken, and then they go into the chest. Up on the surface, Xavier tinkered away at his own machine. He made an assembly line, and this assembly line allowed us to produce machine parts that would be essential for making every other thing in this mod pack. I then remembered you could buy things through the marketplace, but I didn't have any coins. Luckily for me, one of the tasks was pretty simple. All I had to do was write a reason why I needed money, and it was just given to me. With my coins, I was able to buy a profession. Being a carpenter looked pretty easy, so I went with that. I could now sell wood for cash. My next goal was to build a kelp farm. You see, I was getting pretty sick of having to swim out into the ocean for kelp, so why not just grow it in the lake? And to add on to that, why not build a machine that automatically harvests the kelp and takes it to where it needs to go? But one of the materials I needed was slime, and well, there wasn't a single slime to be seen. Luckily, slime was craftable. The only thing I needed was some lime dye. So I left the island. I set sail with the hopes that I would find the materials to make lime dye. Then I discovered some ruins. I explored a little and found out that some of the pots actually had some loot in them. Nothing spectacular, but it was fun anyway. 
As the sun set, I made my way through what looked like the aftermath of a forest fire. The ground, the trees, the plants, everything was charred. Other than that, there wasn't much to see, so I made my way back home. But I did find some ferns along the way, and with ferns, I could actually grind them into dye. Now that I had my slime, I could finally complete my machine. After that, I decided to clean up the area. I wanted to make the platform a little wider, just make it more pleasing to the eye. As for Xavier, he was working on a new machine that I had never seen before. This looked like a pretty powerful device, and I was waiting for something amazing to happen, but... Anyways, the next morning I logged in to find out that Xavier made a new addition to our base. After that, it was time to generate more materials, including sand, as well as wood. Thanks to Noah's automatic tree farm, that was gonna be easy. It was now time to connect all the machines to make one super machine. Everyone got to work. Xavier started making new generators. Noah was trying to figure out a way to get his blocks up to the surface. And I laid the foundation for our new assembly line. Halfway through, we got a surprise visit from our friend Robert. This was him after he found out how much we pay by the hour. Our Randesite alloy machine was finally coming together. But I'm not gonna lie, it looked pretty ugly. Our next job was to cover it up. You know, make it look pretty. So we built a frame around it. And from there we decided to construct our first official factory. We went with an old lumber mill look. And I gotta say, I think it came out great. We also made the machine more easily accessible by adding walkways and railings. Because before, well, we were just falling off into the water. After that, we needed to address our iron issue. Even though we had set up an ore refinery, it just wasn't enough. So it was time to make an iron farm. And what better way to do that than by kidnapping a couple of villagers, scaring them with a zombie, and having an iron golem spawn. Although kidnapping villagers, it's not as easy as it sounds. Those guys put up a fight. It's time to go to heaven, my child. Stop it, what are you doing? Stop, don't, stop, stop it, cut it out with help. Stop. Before we took our new friends to the base, I discovered an underwater mine shaft and thought to myself, hey, why not take a little break? And I am so happy that I did, because I hit the jackpot. Shortly after, Noah and I set up the villagers there at the dock. After that, it was time to build the iron farm. Now I'm gonna be frank. The iron farm design wasn't mine. I got it off of a YouTube video, so there's that. The trickiest part of putting this all together was actually getting the villagers into the farm. We had to set up a little rail system so that we could push them into carts, and then cart them all the way to the top. I'm sorry. Did I say that was the hardest part? No. The real hardest part was actually getting a zombie to go into the tiny little one-by-one -one hole that we had made for it. And just when I had finally done it, this happens. <laughs> we got it done eventually, and after that, we had more iron than we knew what to do with. With everything we had accomplished, it was time to move on to the next chapter. Noah and I hopped on a boat, and we set sail, because now we had to find a material known as Skystone. That could only be found in meteors. It didn't take long until we found some, and after we mined the whole thing, we then came to the realization that we only needed one block. But why did we need it? The Sky Stone was an ingredient for a recipe to make destabilized redstone, a type of red liquid that we would be using for our next assembly line. We also needed to familiarize ourselves with new technology, such as pipes and pumps and spouts and all things having to do with transporting molten metals. Thankfully, Xavier had already set that up for us. His little machine was everything we needed to get started. Good thing too, because it was time to grow some crystals. More specifically, Sirtis Quartz. And the only way to grow it was by spraying a tiny seed with a little bit of water. But before we could move forward, we had to lay an old friend to rest. Robert's corpse had been decomposing in the factory for a while, and at this point it was something of a safety hazard. With that chore out of the way, we could finally move forward. If we were gonna grow more crystals, we needed a little bit of room. So it was time to make another building, but this one was gonna be different. At this point, wood was just simply too primitive. If we were gonna build something, it needed to be made out of a material that reflected our current technological standing. It was time to upgrade to brick. At least the floor was gonna be made out of brick. The rest of the building was gonna be made out of granite, and for some reason people hate this block, but I think it's kinda nice, so yeah. After a couple days, the building was finally taking shape. I spent a lot of time putting the windows together, but I think it was absolutely worth it because just look at how the sunlight passes through them. With the walls up, all we had to do now was just build the ceiling. And after that, we would be set to move forward. 
And even though I had built most of the thing by myself, Noah eventually decided to join me, but he didn't get very far. We laid out the conveyor belt, set up the pipe system, and we even did a little landscaping on the outside. It was simply a matter of figuring out what was gonna go where. Now, we were working with limited space. Granted, we could have made the building bigger, but I didn't. So the task at hand was to figure out a way to condense all the machines in a way where they would still work. For example, instead of making a conveyor belt go from one end of the room to the other, we were just gonna have the conveyor belt go in a circle. It saves space, we can grow crystals, and thanks to the mechanical arm, we can have those crystals move from one belt to another. The next day, we made another new addition to the factory. Do you remember that sky stone we collected from the meteor? Well, this area was dedicated just to that. Grinding the sky stone, mixing it with water, and making sky stone solution. The black liquid in the tank. In order to get this liquid from point A to point B, we were gonna need a lot of pipes. Which meant we were also gonna need a lot of copper. Now copper, well, I just didn't feel like mining it. It took too long, and if we were gonna mine it, we were just gonna get nuggets back. And we needed ingots. So instead, I decided to put my trade to use. I was gonna sell some wood, make some coins, and see if we could just buy some. It wasn't even worth it! A stack of wood for one silver coin? That's a scam. I quit my job as a carpenter and instead became a blacksmith. I could sell armor for four pieces of silver, and it wasn't a problem because we had unlimited iron thanks to our iron farm. Now things were going great, but we ran into a problem. You see, before, we were able to power all of our machines with water using the water wheel. But ever since we transitioned to the furnace generator, all of our power has been coming from burning wood. So it was time for Noah to switch on the old wood farm. The only problem was that the saplings had overgrown the actual machine. And when we switched it on, the trees were actually moving with the saws. We then decided to explore new technologies such as the mechanical crafter. Basically an automatic crafting table. Just the thing we needed if we were going to produce more Certus Quartz seeds. One crystal goes in, two seeds come out. Speaking of crystals, Noah was working on a rig that would allow us to recharge Certus Quartz. And once he finished his loop, we finally had a source of destabilized redstone. With all the machines finally working together in beautiful harmony, we could finally craft our next item, Polished Rose Quartz. And with the Polished Rose Quartz, we were gonna make Electron Tubes. But the only way we could make that was if we had a steady flow of iron going into the factory. And the iron? It had to be melted. Now at this point, the only way we could melt iron was with our smeltery, but we could only melt three ingots at a time, so you can imagine, that was gonna take way too long. So Noah got to work, and he built us a new smeltery which was directly under the iron farm, and thanks to the power of droppers, the iron would instantly fall into the smeltery, melt, and thanks to a series of pipes, it would then be transported into the factory, where it would then be deposited onto the polished rose quartz, thus creating electron tubes. Now before we could finish the assembly line, we needed a steady flow of brass. This meant we would have to construct a new area next to our brick building. An area dedicated to melting ores and mixing them. And the only way to make brass was by mixing copper and zinc. Then all of a sudden out of nowhere, Xavier joined the game. For some reason, Noah was very aggressive towards him, then Xavier decided to kill him after accusing him of committing treason. It was time to make three large vats. Two of the vats would connect to mixers, and once the mixers mixed all the stuff together to create brass, then the brass would be pumped into the third vat, where it would be stored until we needed it. Now here I am minding my own business, then all of a sudden we're getting raided. Noah must have killed an illager or something because these guys just came out of nowhere. And one of the ravagers almost killed me! Luckily we beat the raid, but it came at the cost of Noah's life. Then after that, a creeper found its way into our house! Poor guy, he looked pretty comfy. Now we could have taken it a step further, but I was getting a little tired of being in the factory. I wanted to build, so I decided to build something that would be useful. Now in this mod pack, it was possible to harness the power of wind, so I decided to make a windmill. Now, when I was building the windmill, I just built it with the intent that it was gonna be cosmetic. And this ended up being one big decoration. I knew this thing was going to be huge, and over the course of multiple Minecraft days, I ended up creating something that would tower over everything else we had already built. Now once I had built the tower, it was time to install the blades. And this part proved to be trickier than I thought it would be. In order for this to actually work, we ended up having to craft glue. And to be honest, I didn't even know that was a thing until we needed it. But when all was said and done, we finally had a beautiful working windmill. But the blades were kind of small, so yeah, that needed to be fixed. But once they were bigger, everything just came together. 
After that, I built the roof, and the windmill was finally complete. Now, by the time the windmill was up, we were nearing the end of our 100 days. And I'm not gonna lie, but we weren't even halfway done. There was still so much that we had yet to invent. But even though we had so much to cover in the future, it was nice for the three of us to just stop and admire what we had already accomplished. Our journey with this mod pack was far from over. It looks like we're gonna need another 100 days. Hopefully we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.